Hello and welcome to Open All Ours. I'm Chris Charles. I'm joined by three QPR fans and one living legend. Um, start with, we've got Paul Finney. Good evening. Hello. It's very restrained for you. Uh, yeah. Well, bad, that I'm trying to be understood and keep it so people can understand my stupid accent. So good evening seems about, yeah, seems about right. Okay, that's enough from you. Uh, Charlie Wise. How are you, Charlie? Yeah, very well, thank you. It's been a it's been a busy week with all these away days, but um, uh, nice to sit down and reflect and, and have a chat about them all. And, and ever, again, ready for another game on Saturday. They're just flying at us at the moment. I know. Uh, a third QPR fan, Phil O'Sullivan. How are you doing, Phil? Yeah, I'm grand. Thanks. Thanks for having me back on. It's brilliant. Our pleasure. And finally, last and definitely not least, um, Ilias Chair. Welcome, Ilias. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, let's have a good chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, is your, this is your second time on the podcast. Your, your, your debut it was brilliant with all the children. It was, everyone absolutely loved it. So thanks again for doing that. And, and, and thanks for joining us. And first thing I've got to say is I'm, I'm glad to see you here because when you were with Morocco, there was, uh, it was quite scary a, a couple of weeks back, wasn't it? Yeah, it was scary. It was scary. Uh, I was... Uh, I was in a video game at that time, Call of Duty. <laughs> but, no, but um, can you guys see me? Uh, you've just gone off momentarily. Sorry for there that. That's all right, you're back again. Yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris Willock was calling me. So. Oh, oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Priorities, <laughs> priorities. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, I had help on him, so it's all right. Oh, well, for those who don't know, just explain what happened. It was like a military coup, wasn't it, where you were playing? Yeah, in uh, Guinea. So what happened was it was in, indeed a military coup. And, um, well, the president got captured and it was a whole mess. And it was not safe for us to be there. And uh, we got out of country as quick as possible. That, that sounds you... quite terrifying, to be honest. Yeah, well, we saw the military on the streets and they came into our hotel to check if everything was okay and if there were any, any enemies in the hotel and all that. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, scary for a little bit, but uh, thankfully, thank God we got out of there quick. And, um, yeah, I'm back in London now. So hang on a minute, it is. They came into the hotel to see if you were A, a footballer or B, an opposition member. <laughs> no, no, no. Obviously, the thing was, um, it was a bit scary because it was two military just fighting each other. So, yeah, yeah. two militaries fighting each other. So um, we can just hear the gunshots outside of the hotel and all that. So it was, it was very scary. I was like in a movie, really. How long were you stuck in? How long were you stuck in the hotel for while it was all going on? Uh, so it happened at night. We stayed that night, and then the the next uh, evening we just left. Yeah, oh, so wild, yeah, ten twelve hours maybe. Wow! And how that's not it? it's not funny though, is it? To be fair, when you're stuck in the middle of that, I mean, for anyone who's been in that kind of situation, that's that's a documentary win that happened, isn't it? It's just yeah. you don't expect to go play the game of football and end up in kind of a war zone, do you? Yeah, exactly. And uh, all the lads were saying, "Oh, I've got something to tell to my kids now." So, <laughs> oh, <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to mention um, before we get off the subject of Morocco, um, one of your teammates is obviously an absolute QPR legend. Yeah, correct, correct. So, how is Adele? Uh, he's good. He's good. He's a very good guy. Um, a genuine, a genuine lad. Um, obviously, he gives me a lot of, a uh, lot of advice on how to play the game and how to look at the game and stuff like that. And uh, I can only appreciate him, how he's been treating me so far. Um, and it's a pleasure to play with him. Does he do lots of uh, skills and tricks in training? Or has he calmed that right down as he's got older? No, he calmed that right down. Um, he's more of a, or just a pass and move guy now. I he really is. Yeah, I wanted to see some skills and all that, but he does it sometimes when he has to come out of a sticky situation, but not really a lot. He just plays one, two touch and, and works for the team. <laughs> I, I saw him playing for Benfica on the TV a few months ago, and I, I just thought he wasn't the same player. It's amazing. I, can't, I kind of think that we got the best of Adele Rats at QPR. 
Yeah, well, I think I think for a footballer, your 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 game changes a bit once you become a bit older, and 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 the attribute, the physical attributes are not there anymore. Um, I mean, you can lose a bit of speed, you can lose a bit uh, a bit of agility with injuries and everything. So you've got to adapt your game, and I think he he done that brilliantly, and he's now still playing at the highest level possible. So fair play to him. And does he chat about QPR? Is he is he is he you know happy about his time at QPR? Yeah, well, yeah, he gives me a bit of stick for getting them promoted and everything. So <laughs> you know, he, he, tell, he, tell, he tells me it's going to be a difficult task to do that. So <laughs> no, but um, he's still a he's still a QPR fan. He watches the games. He's a he's actually a very big football fan. He watches a lot of games. Um, he loves football so much. So. He watches QPR whenever he can. And, That's uh, brilliant. Yeah, and he gives you, to be fair, he gives his feedback. He gives his feedback and, and obviously he knows players like uh, Chris Willock, who he played with in Benfica. So, um, yeah, so it's all good, man. Right. Well, I mean, he was, you can tell him from us that he, he was, I mean, he's gone down as one of the greatest ever QPR players and, and he's up against, you know, we, you're going right back to the 60s with Rodney Marsh. 70s with Stan Bowles, people like that. But he deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as him. And obviously, you've got that, uh, you've got that number 10 shirt now, um, like those guys. And um, yeah, I think um, you could well be the same in a few years' time. Well, hopefully, hopefully. I, just, uh, I don't want to compare myself to them because what they've done for the club is, is so, so big, obviously. Uh, I know I know a little bit about Stan Bowles and, and obviously Adele and and there are many many good players that came came before me. Uh, I'm just trying to do my job and uh, trying to please everyone that I had to please and please myself most importantly. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get back to where we belong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's 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 we started well this season. I know we'll come on to that. I know we had. A, a defeat um, the other day, but I, I suppose, guess you can't give everyone two goal head starts in every single game without it coming back to bite you at some point. But um, I, I think generally, the, 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 just the feeling is win, lose or draw. I think everyone's happy just the fact that we're playing good football, we're entertaining. It seems like the squad all like each other. They come over at the end, again, whether they've lost or won and support the players. And it's just, we're on a great ride at the moment. How does it feel for you? Uh, like you said, um, yeah, it's been the start of the season has been very well, uh, very good. Sorry, uh, it's been very good. We've had uh, we have had a good start, but I still think we can uh, we can improve our game, all of us. Um, and it's a long season ahead of us, so we don't have, we don't have to get carried away, and we don't have to get feel disappointed after a loss. A loss is going to come, you know. Um, and and the way the fans are behind us at the moment as well is just brilliant. Brilliant. Um, every every away game has been sold out. I think the way the way fans have been brilliant. So uh, for us at the moment, it's just uh, reflecting after those games. Um, we can't, like you said, we can't give two goals away every single game and, and trying to come back. So it's all about starting faster and uh, and and getting a grip of the game a little bit quicker. And uh, hopefully we'll do that. Just one thing I want to come on to is, I think it's been very apparent this season, this never say die attitude, how we keep on coming back from these, these early goals and getting results. And not, not the fact that last year we didn't have this character and this fight, but there's definitely been a, a sort of change from last year. Do you feel though um, something's changed in sort of the, the culture, the mindset of the players and the squad, or is it simply the fact that we're getting better at taking chances throughout the games? What do you kind of think is, is down to that transitional change of this never say die attitude that we're seeing this season? Uh, I think it's a mentality, yeah. I think uh, for sure it's a mentality. A uh, game is 90 minutes, and, and, and as we've seen in football, football is a. Uh, is a wicked sport, so it can change in in five minutes. Ever the the game can change, and like you saw on um, on Tuesday, we scored one goal. We probably we should have probably won the game, um, but in all fairness, um, yeah, the mentality just 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 the winning mentality that we have to have with the players they brought in, obviously with uh, Steph and Charlie and Andre Gray and 
and uh, other players that came back from injury, like for Luke Amos and all that. So it gives us a bit, of, it gives us a boost as well as a, as a squad. We are, I think, we have a very good squad at the moment, and uh, hopefully, we can stay all fit, and uh, we will be doing very good things this season. Uh, one thing I, I'd like to say in this, I'm 52 years of age. I know I look 35, but I'm old. And if, <laughs> if, if Chris, if, if Willick had a scored on um, at Reading, I think I would have left the ground on a stretcher. I've never known anything like it. But at 3-1, I don't know what you felt. I knew we'd get back into that game. I mean, it, it was we were so... We're so good these days. Even when we lose, it's not like before where, you know, the heads drop and everything else. It's just, and I love the way that you guys respond. It's like, just, you look at each other going, come on, we can do this. Where does that come from? Is that just, is that training? Is that the fact you get on so well? Or is it just the fact you're just thinking, we've got nothing to lose. There's no expectations on us. Just do this. Uh, well, I think it's all about just, just to keep playing our game. And, and, and in football, you tend to, when you, when you up, you tend to, step it down a little bit and go a bit more defensive. Um, and that's what we had in the last couple of games where teams, they scored they scored a goal, they scored two goals and they got a bit defensive. And we, we had more time to play our game. And i got to give the fans some credit as well because they've been behind us every single minute of them games. Um, I know it's not easy to go down 2-0 uh, at Bournemouth. I know it's not easy to go down 3-1 uh, uh, um, at Reading. But We've got to give the fans some credit. They st they stuck with us for the whole ninety minutes, and uh, and that gives us a boost as well. well yeah, but the, man, uh, a wee bit less heart strain would be nice. But I tell you what, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's cracking. I just can't believe how, how you know the, the, not just the way we're playing, but the, the goals we're scoring in this and the chances we're creating. It is is almost like total football, isn't it? It's it's. Is, is, is the manager giving you that much more freedom or what's changed in the last 12 months? Um, I think I think last year, um, we since the manager came in, I think all the, the three seasons he's been here, we, we played good football three seasons. Yeah. But it's just, mm -hmm. it's just that we never really uh, dominated the game and, and, and won a game and, and got that winning mentality in. Uh, a couple of results on the bounce, you know, like we did uh, this time. We had like five, well, on five, uh, five games unbeaten. Um, a good, very good start. I think that is just something that um, the team is a team mentality. Every every single person wants to win, um, and I feel like in the in the last couple of years we had a couple that was just happy just to be there and now everyone just wants to win and wants to 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 get back where where we belong and fight for something much much bigger than just staying in the championship you know in, in terms of in terms of in the dressing room and you know there's obviously that cliche play, uh, players say you know we'll take each game as it comes and what have you and the, i know there's a lot of positivity and optimism from the fans of what we can achieve this season what is what is sort of the target inside the dressing room? What are you guys setting out and saying? You know, what are you targeting to? You know, where are we targeting to finish the season from the players' perspective? Uh, well, from a from a players' perspective, obviously now we have a lot of international breaks, mm. um, so we just trying to we just trying to go by each six games that we play, and then we've got an international break. So we make sure that the six game we the six games we play. We give our absolute best and trying to get a result wherever we are and not be afraid of any single team. Um, and then we get that international break. Everyone gets to recover. Then we go again for another six or seven games. And that's how I think the season will go because there's going to be a lot of international breaks at the moment. And, um, and I think it's taking every single game how it comes. So we don't, we're not afraid of, every sing, uh, of, uh, of any team. Um, I think the teams are more afraid of us now, especially yeah. with the of, especially with the comebacks. So uh, we got a real a good uh, little reputation going in the championship. So for us, it's just more about uh, getting getting them with that winning mentality. Like I said before, that's the most important thing. And if you got that, I promise you, we can go far. Yeah. Can I just talk about a couple of the, uh, I know you guys, there's a lot of young guys in the side, but a couple of the elder statesmen, shall we say, um, Charlie Austin and Uncle, 
<laughs> Do you call yeah. him Uncle? <laughs> yeah, I call him Unks. I call him Unks. <laughs> yeah, um, I call him Unks, man. He's a uh, he's about, a real uncle. Yeah, but I mean, do they? Is that does it help having two guys who've done it all, who've been there before, to, to someone to go and talk to if you know things aren't going quite right? I know you spoke to Adele's like a bit of a mentor of yours. Are those two guys like pulling the dressing room together as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, obviously, we all know we all know Chaz is uh, one hell of a character. Um, we we know that Onks is so passionate about the club; he's a fan himself, so he wants to he wants the best for the club as well. And we got some other players as well that give us some great advice, like Stefan Johansson, um, Lee Wallace. Um, so yeah, it's very important for us guys, for for the young lads, and especially that we have them kind of players there that can that just keep they keep us on our toes. They're not like uh, they're not like uh, shouting at us um, every week or something. No, just just keep us keep us on our toes and and, and get and get make sure that we get the results that we need. Um, and to be fair, it's been a uh, it's been brilliant so far. It's been brilliant. And I just named these four guys. Obviously, there are some other guys as well. But these four guys are the, the, the main leaders in, in, in how we approach games and how we prepare for games and stuff like that. So they've been doing an absolutely brilliant job. And Anx hasn't done a bad job of uh, getting us out of the, uh, the doo-doo in the last couple of games as well, hasn't he? He's been brilliant when he's been on. No, he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Um, he's next to me in the locker room as well, so I speak to him every single day. And, and, and honestly, uh, I call him I call him Onks, but he's like a, a real uncle. He's just like there for you whenever you need him. Um, he gives you great advice, not only about football but just about life in general. And uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that he's with us. And uh, yeah, man, very good guy. Uh, Ilias, you scored an absolute screamer against Barnsley at the loft end where you got almost to the goal line. Were you ever going to cross it or was it always in your mind you were going to smash it in the roof of the net is one question. And the other is, what's your favourite ever goal then? Um, well, um, obviously, that, that game, that I feel like that at that point, a goal was important for us to, to get back in the, in the game. But when I looked up and I saw Don Ball, there was no way that I was going to cross it to Don Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that was Charlie or, or Lyndon or something, I, I, I would consider it. No, but all jokes aside, um, I, I wasn't thinking about crossing at that point. Uh, I just thought, like, let me just go for glory and, and, and anyone well. And my favourite... Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. My favourite goal, I would probably say my debut goal. Uh, very first time I scored for QPR. It was probably the best feeling that I ever had. Um, there was back in the day with uh, Ian Holloway when we won 3-1 uh, at Loftus Road against uh, against uh, Birmingham. And yeah, it was uh, just an unbelievable feeling and, and I will never forget that day. I thought you were going to say the one where you scored from the halfway line at Stevenage. Um, well, QPR is my club, so... Well, exactly, that. yeah. I good, not good answer. Another, yeah, I cannot say another club. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, Ilias, one thing I, I would say is that goal against Barnsley that Phil rightly brings up is is probably the most Adele goal I've ever seen scored by anyone who's not Adele Tarrat. That was <laughs> and I love the fact that you're not scared to keep doing this and to keep trying to keep players that keep taking players on because football's about the team and you guys are young and I see so many youngsters and they have the skill drained out of them by the time they're 25, 26 and they're just keep doing what you're doing. You're on your way to being an absolute legend of a footballer. Just, just keep doing it because that's what the fans love. At Rangers, we love seeing a player try things, do things, and and another thing you don't do is well, you never hide in that pitch. So um, keep doing what you're doing, fella. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Just want to come on to what Finney was saying there. I think one thing that I love watching about this side is I think the sort of the relationship on and off the pitch you have like you say with Chris Willock I mean interrupting us on interrupting the podcast how dare he but the way the fact of like, the, the wave level sorry the wavelength you're both on it, it's so enjoyable to watch how you constantly playing off each other the movement you just just seem interlinked what, what is it like playing with with Chris Willock and how's that sort of relationship and sort of um how's that work you know how's that come about working on and off the pitch so seamlessly 
the thing is we understand each other so we uh, about the same age as well obviously we had ebbs and bright before and uh and i was let oh well i stayed at qpr and i was thinking like oh my god what am i gonna do now and then chris willock came in uh and it was just yeah we just clicked straight away on the pitch it was just a, a link up play and, and we understood each other and off the pitch yeah you, you just get those sort of relationships sometimes in life that it just comes by nature and uh and that is why i have with chris and i have with the seni and, and and some other guys as well and yeah obviously it's, uh, it's great and the more we build our chemistry the better we're going to be Mm. Just, I know you've got to go in a minute, Elias, and that, that's fine. Thanks for thanks for taking the time. But um, in in training, we mentioned their daily training. Then in training, who who do you like to watch? Who do you stand back and go, wow, he's he, he's um, he's pretty special. Uh, uh, at QPR, yeah. Well, obviously, uh, you got you got Chris. Um, once we do finishing, obviously Charlie Austin is finishing, and I ask him all the time, like, "How did you do that? And how did you do this?" And his movement in the box is so, is so uh, unbelievable. Obviously, uh, so yeah, I would say Chris Lee Wallace is an unbelievable player. Uh, the way he links up with with me as well, I, I love playing with Lee Wallace. And we got we got so many players at the moment where you can say it like. Wow, but at the end of the day, I feel like everyone. At the end of the day, everyone is just preparing for the game. At this time, before it was more about like, yeah, well, let me go and impress and let me do this and let me play. But now we really got a squad where it's more let us prepare for the game and let us do what the game asks us to do. And um, I'm just impressed by the team. Obviously, the team has just been doing brilliant. That's very diplomatic. Before you, before, before, sorry, Chris, before you, before. You, before you, I'm sorry, just sorry. One, I was just going to say, uh, just, just also um, the, the gaffer, Mark Warburton. How is it? How is it under him? Is he? He seems like a very. We've had him on the podcast a few times. Seems like a very calm, calm, thoughtful guy, and obviously very good tactician as well. Um, well, since the gaffer came in, um, my game has been been rising up, and I still have uh, a lot of of ways to go up. And he speaks to me daily. Speaks to me daily, goes over the games daily, and 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 it gives me so much confidence. And and the way he speaks to me as well is just, is just perfect. I just the the, the manager that, that I need at this time in my career, uh, and just how he addresses the group as well, and and, and so so smart as well, a very smart manager. Um, and I feel like he he can he can be a top top Premier League manager if he if he gets the opportunity one day. Hopefully with QPR. But he can be a top top manager, and I think a lot of people under uh, underestimate what he can do with a uh, with a with a team. So yeah, a lot of praise to him, and and as well to uh, UST and and uh, and Neil Banfield and the goalkeeper coaches. They've done a brilliant job with Seni. So in in all fairness, we got a a good club, a real family at the moment. So I'm very happy to be part of it. Right. As Chris jumped in, my dog's going mental as usual because it's a flipping podcast. Uh, <laughs> every podcast, every flipping podcast, he has to stick his oar in. And it's what I was going to say to you um, before you go if you wouldn't mind giving our best to Charlie Austin and what he's going through at the moment. Uh, I know he lost his, his grand another this week, and if you just could give him our best to the podcast, is one thing. And another thing, has anyone ever picked a fight with Yordi in training? Because I don't know what you thought on Saturday, but when he came flying through, I thought that Reading player was going to land on Mars. Oh, uh, Do you remember? Well, yeah, I will, I will tell it to Charlie, and uh, he, will, he will appreciate it, obviously. Uh, and Yordi, yeah. Obviously, Yordi is a, a very, very calm person. He's a... Uh, right? like, yeah, he's not... Uh, if you look at him, he's not what you think he is, but then you just don't want to push him too far. So, <laughs> so obviously, obviously, everyone everyone stays away from him a little bit. But no, nah, he's a he's a brilliant guy. Um, he will never get into a fight with any of us because he's such a genuine and lovely guy to to be around. So um, I don't think we will ever see that. <laughs> I just want to come on quickly. Sorry. 
I did see fear in that Reading player's eyes. I, I, it was coming straight towards me, and I thought, if that Reading player wasn't there, he'd come straight into the stand. It was. <laughs> he was like a, he was he was he was on a mission. He probably would have. He probably would have. <laughs> Listen, Elias, oh, thanks ever so much for your time. Hang on, um, Chris, just, just, a quick just, a, just a quick one, just a quick one. If, Sorry, you, guys, if, if, you, if you guys want to keep going, I have no, no uh, time or something. It's not like... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm oh, in man. trouble. Good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, just obviously yourself as an attacker. When you're when you're on the training ground, you're doing small sided games or one on ones. Who is the one player you don't want to come up against in terms of like a defender that you just you, you dread coming up against in the squad? A uh, defender, that, well, obviously I, 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 I like I like I like to do my tricks on uh, on everyone, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, our defense, um, who I don't like to play against, is. Uh, I'll probably say yeah, a Rob Dickey or maybe a Yordi. Uh, they are both very, very good defenders. And um, the way they defend is so inter- intelligent as well. Lee Wallace is a very good defender as well, very intelligent. Um, I don't know how he does it because he's quite quite of a of an all-timer. But <laughs> he, gets, <laughs> he, get, he, gets, he gets there with you if you're, trying to, if you're trying to run him. He gets there with you. So, no, obviously, we've got a good defence going and uh, they've, been, they've been doing brilliantly so far. So, uh, yeah. uh, if I was playing for any other team, I, wouldn't, I would not like to play against our back, uh, yeah. our back five. Just quickly, then. On the I, I just ask a quick... Oh, sorry, oh, totally. no, I no, keep did. doing this. Not to be a big <laughs> story, mate. Um... Who's sort of someone that you've always got their number? Who's one player you always get the better of that you always not making, or is there someone in particular that you always just humiliating on the training ground? Uh, Don Ball gets it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don Ball can get it a few times. Uh, Luke Amos can get it as well um, mm. because because they are so like they're, they're not really um, defenders like centre backs. Centre backs are they will keep away from you and. For me, I, when I'm driving, I like someone that just commits. And then when I see him committing, yeah, it's all over. So, <laughs> yeah, they, I probably say them too. But in all fairness, they are top players as well. They're doing an unbelievable job. And uh, hopefully we can see Luke on the pitch very soon as well. So but that would be brilliant. What I was just going to come in to say, Elias, going on to the Bournemouth game. Um, obviously, there's two things that stood out. One, which I don't expect you to comment on, is Keith Stroud has a very interesting way of refereeing football games um, <laughs> that I've never seen in some referees, but hey-ho. And secondly, what was... You looked pretty devastated at the, the final whistle, and it looked like you know the lads took it really hard. Um, what was it like afterwards in the dressing room? Um, I think for, for us, it was... Yeah, obviously, it was the first loss in, in a long, long time, I think, and... and and obviously, you wanna you wanna win every single game as a competitor. You wanna win every single game. And I think if we if if we get if we get if we got popped off the park and they were just the better team overall, I think you get in the, the in the change room and we say yeah, fair play to them. But that didn't really happen. Uh, we're just devastated because we had so many chances at the end as well. The the players the players that came on done brilliant, done brilliant to to create the chances and 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 to get and to get them pushing backwards um so yeah for it was a bit it was a bit quiet but it was also a bit of a of listen these these guys are meant to be the 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 the, the Barcelona of the championship and we just we just went toe to toe with them uh so we shouldn't we shouldn't be afraid and obviously you want to win but i thought it was a moral win for us as well just to 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 think, yeah, we can we can beat these guys, and and I can't wait to face them at Loftus Road very soon. Yeah, it'd be nice to get the revenge. <clears throat> um, since you've agreed to stay on a bit longer, I, I, you mentioned his name a couple of times, Lee Wallace. Um, <clears throat> it's it, it's weird. I know players, you know, often when they're not playing, they become better, if you know what I mean. But I think we really missed him, and when he came in. Everyone just thought he was going to be a bit part player, just going to be just come on as a sub now and again. But it's really shown, and that's not how criticism the other guys. But I, I think we've really missed him since he's been out. Um, yeah, I told I told them I told them today. Um, I'm I miss you. Uh, I miss playing with you because the thing is about Lee Wallace is uh, he's 
so intelligent and he he knows his football. Um, when he speaks football, everyone listens. You know, it's not like he's not out there saying a bunch of words that no one understands. Everyone listens because he knows uh, how to play the game the right way and how we want to play the game as a, as a team. Um, obviously, Sam McCallum now has come in and has done unbelievable. You gotta you, you gotta give the the, the the lad some credit as well mm. because he came in and, and done an unbelievable job. But in terms of of that um, experience and that and that linking up play with me and and, and Chris Lee Wallace fits into the like fits perfectly with us. You know, um, so does Sam. Uh, so does Sam. But um, yeah, hopefully he will he will be back soon. And, uh, I read I read somewhere that he's he's having another scan though that he's not close to getting back on the pitch. It's gonna be another few weeks yet. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's gonna be a couple of weeks. I spoke to him today. He told me it's gonna be a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know. I've, the medical staff is uh, handling their business with him. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully we hopefully we can see him soon. Yeah. <laughs> He's another one you would want to fight, Lou, isn't he? I'm just thinking. He's, <laughs> oh yeah, but yes. By the way, Lee Wallace, there's not one guy you want to fight. I'm just telling you. I'm just, he's he's probably. The, Are you talking from experience I, there, Elias? Or? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, not, I, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking from experience. But when he gets uh, angry, uh, he can get, uh, <laughs> and he doesn't get angry often. But he's a uh, he's a quiet storm. It, it, it's us Celts, Ilias. We're, we're like very learned assassins. There's Quran assassins and there's Celtic assassins, and we, we, we lash out, but then we forget about it. The other thing is, in this season, I mean, I'm not bothered, I'll be honest with you, if we go up or anything like that, though, because I'm just enjoying the season. I'm just enjoying the way you guys are playing. And maybe that's a good thing because there doesn't, I know there's some big hitters in this league, there's the West Brom, the Bournemouth, and everything else, but I seem to think, I, I really think we've I haven't seen anyone yet on TV or playing that scares me. I think this lot can go toe to toe with anyone. Yeah, I, I, I'm agreeing with you here. Um, I think there's any 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 team can come and get it, um, um, especially at home. Yeah, uh, agreed. Uh, a lot road. I think uh, we we are feeling we are feeling the energy from the fans. Um, because we have played the year without fans, so uh, it's been a, it's been a real relief when the fans came back. And honestly, I don't think we we're afraid of any single team. And if you go player by player, and and don't look at any names, just look at the attributes of of any team. You you you'd say yeah, we got we got the better of them here. So. I'm really excited for this season. I know it's I know it's very early, still like 40 games to go, and the championship can be cruel sometimes. Uh, but we just have to keep our heads down and keep working, and 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 hopefully we can see the benefits after. Right, last question. I promise now because we we have kept you a long time. Just you know, I've got this 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 shirt on the away shirt at the moment. It's the first uh, the first shirt I bought in years, but. I've got to say, we, there was a there's a YouTube channel. I can't remember the guy's name, but this this kit, the black kit, was voted the uh, the best kit in the championship, and the home kit was in the top six, I think, as well. Um, were you quite excited when you saw the kits arrive? And is it is it is it did you feel good playing in them? Yeah, yeah, nice, very nice kits, very 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 nice kits. Um, I love them, and uh, every every single one, every single person that's close to me asks me, "Oh, yeah, can I get the kits? Can I get the kits?" <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, they done uh, they done <laughs> they done a very good job in creating them kits, and uh, yeah, well, we are proud to wear the the, the badge and, and and just go out there and enjoy everyone. It's a perfect kit to get promoted in. It is a perfect kit to get promoted. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Elias, we've got the away game with Finland coming up soon, and I don't ask for much, but a twenty-five yard free kick, top corner winner in the last minute would go down lovely. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll try and do that. We'll try and do that. <laughs> or, or, a, or a Rob Dickey 45 yard thunder strike even better whatever just yeah, the, 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 uh, Rob Dickey's 45 is probably more you have more chance there because he's <laughs> <laughs> does he hit them in all seriousness I'm sorry Chris I'll let, let him go off this because I know we're keeping your list but does he hit them sort of things in training is, he, is there someone guiding them in with some kind of weird um, te 
technology behind them because I've I've never done anyone to hit a ball that hard and that sweet. No, he does, he, he tries it in training and it ends up in the in on the M four. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know how he does it in games, but uh, <laughs> training, uh, training, you, you probably see a ball flying on the M4 on Friday, on the Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, mate, well, thanks ever so much for joining us again. Uh, really appreciate it. And, and, no. and, and, and thanks, thanks to you and all the team. You're putting a, a smile on everyone's faces this season. No, thank you very much for having me and uh, thank you very much for the support that you guys give us this season and hopefully we can do great things together. Smash Bristol Good City man. on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's the really next good. target. Yeah. Just time. enjoy yourself, Cheers, big man. Keep enjoying Thanks yourself. Yeah, Cheers, thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. And there he goes. What a, what a, what a man. What a that's man. Brilliant. I, t I, t I tell you what, you, you look at all these players, don't you? Sorry, Charlie, you probably do this more than I because you, you, you're, you're the wee professional. Me, Phil, and Chris, well, Chris is a professional, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, yeah, no, he is. Yeah. He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> when he's, I um, he's, he's, hit the cord. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, fairly admitted. Brilliant. Well done. I got blamed for that. Thanks well, for that. Anyway, yeah, whatever, Chris. Anyway, isn't that interesting? Talk to a youngster, a young lad that's not media trained. He's not watching what he says. He's not just the yes and no's. He's he seems pretty genuine, very very genuine actually, more than say. And it's I'll just nice, isn't it? I'll tell you the other thing. I think that one of the material changes this season, which I didn't want to say when he was on, I think the Rangers fans actually like the QPR team at the moment. You know, yeah. if you go if you go back through the last two years, some of the journeymen and all sorts of people are coming in ridiculous wages and everyone's kind of begrudged it or whatever. There's a brilliant team spirit that Warburton's got going. And you could just see Senny Dieng running the length of the pitch every time we score. And I think it has it's kind of got into the crowd that everyone wants to support this team because they feel kind of close to them. Um, and Ilias Chair, on that interview, it comes across exactly like that. I think the, the team spirit and the, and the makeup of the team is superb this season. Yeah, I think... Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. I think his sort of outlook and everything was, was very refreshing. And it was quite interesting to, see, uh, to hear him say the part about um, a couple of years ago, we just had people that were happy to be here, but now we've got everyone that's buying into it and everyone wants to win. So, and I think that was very apparent. I think, mean, Finney, you, you touched upon it uh, with Bournemouth and... Um, when the players came over at full time, Barbe, he just, the whistle was blown just to, and he, he was standing right in front of the away fans. And I genuinely thought he was going to burst into tears. He, he looked so devastated. And Rob Dickey as well, when he walked over, of course, there was that, that bit of conundrum for the, uh, the, the first goal. Um, and you could really see how much it meant to the players out there. And I think, you know, we're not going to win every game this season. Um, but what, like I say, what's refreshing is, is how willing they are to win. And you can't ask for anything more, more from that from your side. And like I say, that's why everyone's just loving watching Keep Your Eye on the moment because they, they're, they're buying the into it and it's, and it's great. Well, this is it. And the fans, you know, in, in you know, days gone by, you know, you lose a game like that, you know, that half the fans would already be out the, out yeah. the ground um, or there'd be boos and, you know, um, you know, comments. But yeah, it's, um, I, I think, you know, the fans are just, you know, because at least you, this team don't leave anything on the pitch to use an old cliche. They know, you know that they're trying, and, and we were unlucky really not to get a, an equaliser, but... Oh, definitely. As, as I said, you can't keep giving teams two goals. No. <laughs> um, Although, I, did anyone else think the first one was a foul on Rob Dickey? He got that ball because he went straight through Rob Dickey's uh, ankle. I haven't watched it back. In, in real time, I didn't think it was, personally. I, I didn't make it because I was dropping our kid off to uni, um, and I got back just in time to watch it. And I thought the same thing, Phil, to be fair. I thought he was far, but it's a mistake. Well, well, it didn't upset me and it didn't annoy me, but it was just a bit weird that some people were on his back a bit. I think, you know, he's been absolutely outstanding this season. Probably player of the championship, in my mind, and I'm not being biased. I mean, I've, I've watched it on TV and everything else. And I think, you know, some people are picking holes in this and the other. Look, listen, we, we used to go seven minutes without getting beat. To go this a number of games and not be beaten is amazing. And also, like, you know, letting goals in. It's a championship. Goals are scored left, right and centre. It's a very fast, competitive league that you don't get any time on the ball. And the difference between us and Bournemouth was as well as they did take their chances better than us. And 
they were very pacey and a good side and absolutely mastered the dirty tricks to an absolute T. I've oh, never... Cool. Didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah I mean, the things they were doing was just outrageous. I mean, you, yes, well, it should have probably been sent off. You, you, you know, I've seen that a million times. And you, 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 but he was poo, so a yellow for your man. But also the guy throwing the ball away, that should be a yellow, he's been off. And then that tackle at the end... Um, was it Davis in a well, That was shocking. I mean, that was that was a two foot tackle, red card all day long, and Keith Stride just didn't do nothing as usual. And just, I felt that was pretty bad. I felt that we didn't deserve that, to lose, even with the, the, the poor goals we gave away. Sorry, Phil. We, we gave away two dreadful goals. The reason we didn't get a draw as well, mustn't forget, is their keeper had an absolute worldie. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. he just save after save after save. But going back to your other point, Finney. They definitely had a game plan to kick Willock and Chair off the pitch. And yeah. you, know, you know the phrase that a ref loses control of the game? It doesn't necessarily mean there's a massive flare-up, but the ref lost control of that game because it was just weird decision-making, not giving free kicks when he should have done, not giving a yellow card when he should have done. And so there was a kind of free-for-all. So our flare players were, were flattened so regularly, weren't they? Yeah, just come to the there referee. No, no, go on, Sorry, go, on, on. go on, go on. There's also the kick and bar bait, which was a red as well. Um, if you're going to stand Willock off, and they're going to win by Willock to miss it off, the fellow that kicked bar bait should have walked as well. You know, the, and it just annoys me. Stride, I think, is absolutely shit anyway. But he does nothing but prove to me game after game after game after game that he is the Rob Styles of this world. And... Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, it's just to me, it's, it's sad because it ruins the game for both sides. But then I'm still struggling when people on TV saying Bournemouth demand promotion to the Premiership. They're going to where they belong. Really? Bournemouth? Jesus. I think with the, the TV, very strange. I, I was like you, I couldn't get down to Bournemouth. Um, unfortunately, I was at Reading. Um, but um, yeah, the, I, I think the, the problem is that, the, that some... Um, pundits don't do their homework and, and, and Bournemouth like ex Premier League club from you know like two seasons ago or whatever it's an e it's an easy thing to latch on to and it's you mm. know like the same with West Brom you know they, they're more comfortable talking about teams that have been in the Premier League you know recently and than, than they are about teams like QPR and I've seen it yeah time and time again it's um it, Bournemouth Chris I know, I know years. exactly what you're I mean, saying I don't, don't get me wrong I don't even believe that we are a Premiership club anymore um, we we won the 90s, we proved that. Um, but you know, we spent more time out of it than we have in it. You know, but Bournemouth, I mean, come on, it's just yeah. and that's not being disrespectful. That's just being shocked. They they they're terrible, aren't they? Yeah. Johnny, what were they singing? I couldn't make it out. Oh my god, was there was one. Like... There was one chant that just was just hysterical. Though is that one? Is I don't want to sing it, embarrass myself, but it was like, and if you can't hear us. We we'll sing a little like, and it was just like, oh my god! It was like scout camp <laughs> coming from from the air of the stadium. But just going back onto your point as well about the referee, and I don't think I've seen such a disjointed game. There was no flow. Every single possible free kick he stopped, and he did not allow one quick free kick for the whole ninety minutes. He stopped, have a word with the player, and it just killed. It just killed the game. I know you talk about the decision making and lack of. Um, like penalisation for the time wasting but that for me was just so amateur um, and it was just very frustrating to watch it just didn't it just it didn't allow the game to sort of get going it was like I say it was just constant pauses and uh, yeah disappointing but yeah, the Bournemouth fans were, were shocking <laughs> Right so we, so we just before we um, get down to the R's end and all the rest of it let's, let's just move on to the Reading game um, I, I was one of the one of the fans who was in the away end um, or, or <laughs> <next>. <laughs> Sorry, not the exit away in the home end. I should say. Sorry. Oh, really? Um, yeah, next to um, uh, next to the away end. Um, and I, I kind of sat tight because um, somebody I know from Reading had got me the ticket, and I didn't want to get him in bother. But it was yeah. It, first of all, it was like a couple of people, and then they scored the goal, and they're just popping up everywhere. <laughs> uh, it's such a such a such a weird situation then of course they all sort of moved to the front I've got to say that I didn't see any there wasn't any bother there was no no one was hitting anybody or anything like that but just shocking decision by Reading in the first place to not release those tickets there was like a you know like a, a bit higher up there was like an empty little stand they could have put them yeah. in and as it ends they, 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 as it turns out they put them all in the home end anyway but 
I'm just saying, if that, that you know, if they'd all have been there when we got 3 1, it only takes some idiot from Reading to start goading someone. You could have had a full scale riot on your hands. I think the thing is, Chris, what they did is they, there's that um, group of scope boys um, in the corner that they, they stay as a singing section and flag waving section and, yeah. and, and so on, which I think was half full, something like that. So that's why we didn't get it. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to look at the ground as half empty and, and, and not understand why they couldn't delegate somewhere else for QPR fans to go to and save themselves a whole lot of hassle because you should be putting your stewards in that situation anyway for a start. And secondly, you don't need any trouble at football that makes both clubs look bad. And um, I think the, the Rangers fans are more than happy just to, the, the way things are, they just got carried on a crest of a wave. But if it was a... A dean, if Willick School had got in and they'd have been in that section, it could have been a very different story. However, it wasn't, and well played to him for getting and joining us. But yeah, it's just ready being ready. I mean, we're kind of getting this as well. Like, you know, you, you're getting like Team Brentford seem to have an obsession with us, which is weird. On Twitter, you've got, um, you know, and you've got the likes of Reading and stuff like that there. But I just, I, I just think getting to whoever designed Reading's ground should be, um, well, I would say hung, drawn and quartered, but that's too late. I mean, who the hell decided to build that out there, that far out? And it's just chaos. And also, it's like every game's like the first game. Waiting for a boss is just like, Jesus, it's like it's like the last flight out of Saigon. I mean, you know, it's just like, the, 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 they've never had this before. Oh, yeah, we've never... And they just wait, and it's just like, it's just a recipe for disaster if you've got the wrong attitude. But one thing I will say about away days is, and I said this to me on Saturday, I have just the one, because I've only got one friend. Nah. Um, and I said to, to, to Alan, who supports Crusaders, by the way, and they're shy in Northern Ireland. But anyway, um, as point. well, as I was just saying, you know, he hates Glen Torn, we hate Crusaders. Um, the, the whole away experience is so much better now because everyone's happier. You don't, mind, no, you don't mind how much you drink. You don't know how much you spend. How much you spend. The crack is amazing. And the, the, it's not just winning. It's because, and Charlie hit this nail on the head earlier on, these fans, these players relate to each other at one hundred percent, and I, I don't think no matter what happens this season, the team and the fans are going to stay strong. Whatever happens, and I think that's bloody brilliant because you don't care. There's so many years you're at Rangers games, and it's just so depressing. This is, this is brilliant what they're building, and I hope I just hope it continues for. It's like the old QPR Phil and and, and Chris. Sorry, Charlie, to, to make you feel young and left out of this, but you know this is the QPR we fell in love with, isn't it, lads? You know this is. Oh, and this is what it's about. That's what, that's- that's why I mentioned it. You know, I remember in the premiership years, I took my son away to Liverpool because I wanted to go to Anfield. And we were in row B or C or something in, in Anfield. And Jay Bothroyd was playing. And I can't, I'm not, I, won't, I won't use the language now, but a QPR bloke, QPR, ran down the alleyway right to the front. And Jay Bothroyd was chasing or not chasing this ball into the corner. And this bloke shouted at the top of his voice, I've driven five hours to get here, you bleep. The least you can do is fucking run around. And everybody stopped. Because Anfield is, can be a bit like a library anyway. QPR weren't making any noise. And Jay Bothroyd heard this and just stood and looked at this bloke. And you just wouldn't get that at the moment. And he was, this bloke was absolutely right. Jay Bothroyd was there earning his 40 grand a week, just wandering around like he didn't care. Whereas at the moment, it's the complete opposite of that. No, and long may it continue. Yeah. yeah. There, there's um, one thing I just want to quickly touch upon with the fact that, you know, everyone's buying into how great it is supporting the team at the moment. But this for me just went way too far. Resting a beam back for the Reading game is like, come on, <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, for me, I just I thought, thought that was. That was I thought sick. that was the club taking the mick a bit, to be yeah, honest. So did I. <laughs> I, I thought it was. was I thought it was, I thought it, was, it, it meant the TV in a bean bag, but right. obviously I got it wrong. Yes, a bean bag was a bit of a screen. For, I think for Reading they, away. Busy, Come on. <laughs> I think they were. I think the club in the defence were probably trying to show they were doing everything they possibly could after the absolute cock up with the tickets so it's kind of we cocked up with the tickets like we're trying to get your bean bag it's never going to happen <laughs> can, I, can I I just raise one other point as well you know when you, 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 you thank your lucky stars do you see today Forrest have sacked Chris Hooton mm. right this is the same club that sacked Warburton and look what Warburton is doing for us you just think through all those dark seasons we've been you know chopping and changing of managers terrible management at the top terrible recruitment or whatever we finally seem to be in a place where we're in a better position than others. 
and there was a story in the Times again today about Derby being deducted nine points. You just you just got to enjoy it whilst we're in a kind of a good place. You know what I mean? The, inter the interesting thing about story? Forest is sorry. Sorry. The, the, the interesting thing about Forest is that I find it's like you know when you're in a relationship and it's like it's not you, it's me. With the Forest board, it's definitely not us, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> every manager, every season, it's ridiculous. They continue to run of sacking a manager like within 12 months for uh, oh, it's just ludicrous. It is, but every it's, season since 2010, they've had a new manager, time, yeah, 10 season. years, yeah. Right. So, what was the derby thing? I missed that. What they're going to be deducted nine points this season, or next well, season? I mean, don't know. This is this has been rumbling on for ages, but there's a story in the paper today that they were going to get deducted nine points this season, yeah. But we'll believe it when we see it, won't we? We can well, imagine, like, the, and, and the Brian Clough way, whatever they call that little stretch of road, like, you know, Derby are having this horrible season, it's going completely, completely wrong, and, and Forrester are going, like, hold my beer, you know, because yeah. they, <laughs> they're, they're giving it a go of being absolutely worse run than the rivals. It's, 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 I feel for the fans, but at the same time, Jesus, I mean, why do these people buy these football clubs and destroy them? But, you know, thank God it's not us, eh? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, before we come on, I come on to ours end. Um, I just want a little conundrum for you both. We've got Bristol City obviously next, and then we've got Everton in the cup. Um, hand on heart, would you if you could if you could only win one of those games, which one would you choose to win, oh, Finney? It's a cool oh, for Christ's sake! What a stupid question. <laughs> I'm not answering that. That's a nonsense. I'm 52 <laughs> years of age. I'm bold and fat. I refuse to answer. Stupid now. I would. I'll always take three points, but I really, really want a cup run. Um, so I want to win both, and I refuse to pick and choose which one to lose. <laughs> Phil, uh, I well, this I was going to come on to this later on, but actually, you know, this whole feel good thing, and yeah. we were very uh, unlucky to lose against Bournemouth, and and I just love the fact the ground's fuller and everyone's loving it. But I was going to say later on, but we've got to it now that this is a bit of a key week because we've got to do a job against Bristol City. Because we've then got Everton that could really dent confidence. And then we've got West Brom away on telly on a Friday night. Oh, my Lord. That can't, you know, maybe it will go well. We'll see. So, you know, you can easily see if things don't go well against Bristol City, it could be a pretty torrid week. I don't think it will because I think we'll beat Bristol City. But if you give me a straight choice, I would go for a win against Everton. Because we've got we've got thirty odd games to go. I'm so confident in this team. As long as Johansson doesn't get injured, that we are going to pick up shed loads of points. And even if we're eighth by kind of March, I'm confident we'll get the playoffs. But I'm with Finney. I would just love a cup run. Yeah. And I I I think if I I'm hoping and praying in some ways that Everton make nine changes and we beat them four nil. That you know that that because that thing. The thing that the Premiership do about swapping sides out for the cup is just atro atrocious, and they shouldn't be allowed to do it. It's just you know, we have to go to. Sorry, Phil. We have to go to nil down to be dangerous. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, Phil. I'm, I'm I'm kind of glad that Everton are doing well. I mean, they're sort of joint top um, on on points certainly, um, which may, makes me think you know that they're, they're more more likely to try and rest a few. I think we should. You know, rest a couple as well, but um, you know, if someone someone who needs a rest, that is. But yeah, I I, I would I would take the Everton win. Um, Charlie, what do you think? See, I'm gonna I'm torn. It's a tough one, but I'm gonna contradict the three of you. I think um, don't get me wrong. I love the cup. There's something so special about the cup, and I'd love to go far in the cup this year. But if I did have to pick the one, I would go for the league win. I think in in this league, it's it's, you know, of course, it's not easy at all. But um, once you string a good few wins together, it's just as easy to, to completely disband and go downhill. And I think two back-to-back -back defeats, you then go into an Everton game where you could be up against it. We only get something in that one. And all of a sudden, we've gone this amazing run and we, we could be, you know, three, you know, three defeats in a row. And it's hard to come, sometimes come out of a rut in this league. So personally, I'd bank the three points in the league. But like I say, I'd love a result in the cup, and I'd, I'd love to see what what we can do in the, in the cup this year. I bought my ticket for Everton because I thought, you know, in case I need to keep it and prove the points, so I can get a Wembley ticket when we get there. <laughs> 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 oh Lord, that's not going to end well. <laughs> okay, right, our end time. Um, Finny, 
Oh no, you you go last. Sorry, I've, I've not done this for a while. It's not terribly sorry. You can tell, Crystal. You have, listen, you press record this time, so it's all good. <laughs> Bill. Uh, I haven't really got one, but the one thing I was going to say, which I haven't said so far, is what a magnificent piece of business it is getting Stefan Johansson. And if, you know, I, I was a huge fan of Charlie Austin. I go on about him all the time. He's a great finisher. That was a great bit of business. Ilias Chair is superb. We talked to him earlier on. But our season hinges on Stefan Johansson. He, is, he just makes everything tick. And it's interesting. First half against Barnsley was the first half of football I've seen him be really anonymous and we were losing. Something happened at half time. Second half, he was absolutely outstanding, demanding the ball all the time. That is the player that our, I think more than any other that our season hinges on. He is a class act. So I suppose that's my arse end. Brilliant. Charlie? Um, maybe one that may be a little bit more negative. Um, I think our fan base sometimes just really does frustrate me at points. Um, I think we, you know, we've enjoyed an unbelievable start to the season. And again, you know, it's, we're seeing these, these things about um, Charlie Austin, how everyone's for some reason is getting on his back for um, some of his performances recently, which I think is just um, ludicrous. I don't really think anything's warranted that. And then there was a lot of, um, a lot of abuse for Osman Kakai after his performance at Bournemouth. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think you know. I don't think that was a good performance. I think um, he kind of got that one wrong and wasn't quite at the pace. But I don't think now in this, you know, we we're so keen to promote this culture of players. Go, you know, you know, we've seen Chair and Willock um, expressing themselves fantastically well, and the confidence in that squad. This never say die attitude is only because of that. And if QPR players, as QPR fans, are constantly, I know it's only a select few, but tearing players down, it's just like. What, what more can you want from, from the players at the moment? They're, they're putting everything out there and it's the least we could do is just get behind them. They're not all going to perform fantastically well at every game of this season. It's just get behind the club at the moment, enjoy it, because this won't last forever. You know, exactly. Soon enough, there will be a time when you'll be complaining about everyone. So just bite your tongue and just, and just buy into it and just enjoy it is, is my sort of stance at the moment. Yeah, I just, to, just to follow up, for, for those who don't know um, with Charlie, and like you say, yeah. it is a select few, but... It, it, it was enough for, her, for his wife um, to, to, to put this on Twitter. She said, I'm so proud of my husband. Between hospital visits, spending time with his granddad and family and very little sleep, Charlie still wanted to train every single day, still wanted to play purely because he loves his club. At least it's evident now why he looks out of sorts. You never know what goes on behind closed doors, so just be kind, always be kind. To anyone who had anything negative, negative to say that wasn't constructive in the last few weeks, shame on you. There is no place for these kind of people in football. Mm. And yeah, well said, Bianca. I think you know, the majority looking at the replies. I think it's you know ninety nine percent would be behind him. And, and and who in the right mind would criticise Charlie Austin? I mean, Charlie madness. Austin, he, he's a you know I mentioned earlier about the, the all time great QPR players. He's he's right in the mix. You know, he's mm. an absolute legend. And you know, so it, obviously, regardless of family circumstance, he might just be a bit out of form. So what? You know, it's it's players ha have bad trots, the same as we have bad trots in life. Support him and support the team. It's not mm. rocket science. Um, well, that's true. But then, to be fair, people aren't going to know what's going on behind closed doors. I think some people. Though, I mean, no, hang on a sec. Let me. Let me I haven't finished your point, Chris. It's all right. I don't mind. You got a nice top one. I'll, I'll let you off with it. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I keep saying that these people are human. Keep, keep it constructive by all means. Yeah. You know, no one's saying you have to love everyone because we don't. You can't no, criticise because we do it in the pub, of course not. But it's like just be a wee bit wise sometimes. I mean, it's enough. You know, this brings me on to a point I was going to make. I, I set up, as you know, a WhatsApp group um, after Lossy Mum because you know was, I'm, I'm not sure. I was struggling, so I thought, well, there must be a lot of people who are struggling, pandemic, losing people, yada yada yada. And then we got people joining it so they could leak information from that group onto WhatsApp groups and put it on Twitter and stuff like that. And I kind of think, you know, the world's twisted. This is our own fans doing this. And it's really sad because there's some people who really need that group who felt isolated and felt alone. And the next thing they're having their phone numbers and messages put all over Twitter and stuff. And it's like, whoever's doing it, please stop it. You know, you're doing a lot of damage to people. You, you might think it's funny. If you want to have a go at me, just put my shite up that I talk about and have a go at me. I'm big enough to take it. 
But respect the group and the meaning of that group. That group is there for some people who you might not relate to, you might not understand the pressures they're going through. But believe me, there's some people who need that group. And the last thing they need is their names and their messages. No matter how simple you may think those things are, put out there. Just leave them alone and let people get on with it. You know, grief is a terrible thing. I'm telling you, I've never experienced anything like it. I hate it. I understand what Charlie Austin's going through and Bianca, but people do need to be kind. Bianca's right there. But also, don't be a gobshite. Try and understand people. You know, that, that, that really frustrated me this week saying, what's that message is put on the web again? I'm just like, wow, what is wrong with these people? It's just a group where everyone just says, I mean, to give an example of how good this group is, and, I, you know, I, I don't even talk that much. There's a fellow who's having a heart attack, Ross Noble, who's been on the podcast, Chris, you know? Mm, yeah. And it was documented the whole way through. He went to work, and he's like, oh, I'm in the back of an ambulance. And the support that he got and his wife helped him through intensive care and everything. So, yeah, that's my run. I'm sorry to bore you all to death, but it's just, it pisses all, me no. off. No, They're supposed to be fans of it. We all support the same club. We have. Yeah, no, very well said, mate. And, and I'll do my, my R's end is, is, is very quick. I did it in, in the uh, the pod that never was. The pod that, uh, <laughs> didn't get recorded. That, that was the best podcast ever, Chris. You made some blinding remarks that day. Uh, you didn't so, get everything wrong at all. <laughs> it's kind of deja vu because I was in a hotel room for, for work yeah. then, and I'm in one now. And you know, I'm just terrified. Yeah, I'm looking at the te- top top left, and it's still saying recording. I believe that Charlie's recording too. Yeah, for Belton Ratings, covering so all bases. We can I hope this does it. see the light of day, not least for Elias Chair because he was brilliant. But, but yeah, so Phil's way like back, to room with the camera just in case. Carry on. Yeah, <laughs> but way way back when, um, when it, it must have been July or August when I was on holiday in Broadstairs in Kent. Um, I uh, yeah, like I said, I, I haven't bought a new top in years, but I like this so much that I'm even even when wearing it uh, outside of games, um, and uh, spotted another QPR fan with his brother uh, wearing tops, only other tops on the beach, apart from Chelsea, but we won't, we won't go into that. Even the ice cream man was, uh, used to go to my school in Northolt. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to shout out to them, to Kieran and Owen McKenna, um, and their mum, Jackie. So that's it. Absolutely. Sorry, 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 that's right. I, I'll, I'll do my R's in now because that wasn't really my R's in. It kind of went into the, the Charlie. <laughs> oh, here we go, really. <laughs> right. The and it goes back. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be two minutes. Listen, I love the kit on Saturday. I thought it looked fantastic. I think the home shirt looks brilliant. And I just want to say, well done, Francis. He takes a lot of grief at times, but fair play to him. He really has pulled it out this season. I think it's very, it's, 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 both kits are beautiful. And I say that as a 52-year-old fat, baldy man. But yes, well done, Francis. You've given us something proud of. And I think they're class this season. And it's nice to see so many people and kids. And it's nice to see Rangers fans with smiles on their faces. As I was said on the podcast, it never was as well. And Charlie <laughs> made some fantastic points out there. It's a oh, shame. Yes. Unbelievable, if we, if, yeah. Oh, Jesus, Charlie. I think, do you know what? I think the podcast awards was waiting for that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Thanks, Finney. Uh, predictions before we go, Bristol City and Everton. Um, I'll go first. I, I think Bristol City, uh, I'm going to go 3-1. And Everton, depends what type team they put out, but I'm going to go one or we win on pens. I, I think Bristol City will be 2 the Rangers. I think we'll keep a clean sheet because we have to, because otherwise everyone's going to... Load, but no one ranges it big for three, two, four, three, whatever. There'd be goals, and um, I just want to see Nigel Pearce and blow his fuse again. I, I love seeing Nigel Pearce. I love managers when they just blow their fuse and just thinking, I don't want to be in that changing room if I was you. You just know that the, it's, it's, the, the whole thing is going to blow up. Everton, I think, is going to be like Chris, but I think it'd be like two all or something, and they'll go to penalties. And I think Cindy Yang will come out of it as a superb stop stopper and a hero. Fabulous. I'm almost believing that. Uh, Phil? <laughs> uh, I think we'll beat Bristol City, but I actually don't think that the goal fest will continue. I think it'll be something like 1-0. But, yeah. but yeah, so, exactly, so would I. But I think that Everton are going to change a whole host of players, and I think we're going to trounce them 3-0. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Steady on, son. Uh, I was, I was, called, I was uh, called an optimist last time I was on, so I'm, I'm, throwing, <laughs> I'm throwing the optimism out again. I, yeah, Phil, the optimist. I, I thought it was Phil the positive. It's the optimist, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. I'll have what Phil's having. Uh, right, Charlie. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if this is more of a wish than a prediction, but 
I'm hoping on Saturday it'll be the the some the sorry the first sort of convincing win in terms of not going behind early and kind of and going a two nil win is what is what our, my prediction is for Saturday Everton. Um, I was gonna kind of um, gonna go with what you. I, I was feeling a one one uh, the same as same as Chris there. Maybe it going to penalties and of course we are being triumphant. So yeah, two two nil I think on Saturday. I'm, I'm hoping for like I say a convincing win where we haven't got. I don't get me wrong. It's, it's great come uh, doing all the comebacks, but I'd love just a, a reassured uh, performance from from the first minute to the last because I don't really think we've seen that. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's like watching the remake of Bloody Jesus this, this team every week, isn't it? There's more comebacks. It's like, oh, Jesus, we're going to resurrect ourselves again. This is just... Re- so, yes, a nice, easy 7-0 home win would be tre- yeah. tremendous. Everton, is Everton, yeah. Charlie? Yeah. Everton, Charlie? What did you say? Oh, no, Everton, I was saying 1-1 one, one and penalties as well. Brilliant. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. Right, fellas, thanks ever so much. Um, it's been open all hours. Um, you can uh, listen to us, and quite frighteningly for me anyway, you can actually see us. Uh, where can they see us, Charlie? Uh, Talking Rangers YouTube channel. Fabulous. Yeah. All right. But sadly, this face ain't going to get any better. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, 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 cheers. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you later, lads. See you guys. Uh,